Three, two, one, and we're in. Hey guys, how you doing? We're live with Dr. George Kwan, all the way from the States. Hey guys, how? First of all, if you're new here, make sure to hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. And if you're watching live, get your comments in. We'll be answering any comments and questions that you guys have. Uh, George, how you doing? I'm good. Thanks. Thanks for having me, man. No, it's, I've been wanting to speak to you for a while. Obviously, you're... Uh, uh, a young dentist like me, we're in a similar sort of situation in terms of our, the, the length of career and how, how long we've been, uh, you know, working. So it's nice to see someone across the pond who's in uh, the same spot as me. And uh, of course, you're you're one of the, the guys who's uh, supporting the channel as well via the Patreon group. So uh, massive um, thanks from me. So very appreciative of that. Yeah, man. Happy to support what you're doing. I think it's really cool. Yeah. Um, should we dive right in? So th the thing that I'm really interested about, and obviously we'll get more to fireworks. So if anyone hears bangs, it's fireworks outside. Just, you know, <laughs> uh, <laughs> it just shook me a little bit. That. Um, yeah, the, the, the thing that I want to talk about, uh, and we'll get into more about, you know, where you graduated and stuff like that and where you're working a little bit later, was uh, your in the early stage of uh, developing an app which might help some dentists around the world. Can you tell me a bit about the problem that you saw and then how you think you might be able to help us out. Yeah, <laughs> it's funny uh, we talk about this because, you know, with COVID virus, you know, coronavirus uh, dominating the world right now, um, you know, with the pandemic, we, our industry have been trying to figure out different ways to make it more efficient, um, you know, safer for the patients, as well as, you know, just making sure that our staff members are not ex mm. um, as much. So, you know, one of the few things that I've seen, you know, the way we communicate with each other in clinics, and I thought it was quite inefficient when we use, you know, sticky notes or, you know, had to go find somebody uh, if you need yeah. an exam, if you have questions about certain things. You know, I didn't quite like uh, what, was out there so far so i wanted to create a safer and more efficient work environment so i decided to start on a new project called stat chat yeah so how's it going to work very broadly because i know you're you're super early kind of in development so it's you know you're, you're working out the kinks and and, and stuff like that but uh, briefly how would you implement something in in the practice uh <laughs> well I, I guess it comes in stages but you know, ideally what we want to do is have this displayed in all sorts of uh, electronic devices, computers, mm -hmm. cell phones, smartwatches, you know, and ideally we, instead of typing everything out, clinical staff can just click a button or two to communicate, oh, Dr. Kwan, two up one, or hygienist, two up one, up three. You know, just having two buttons to be able to convey uh, or summon somebody to a location. Kind of like a uh, modern day pager? Yeah, exactly. Um, currently, the solutions have been, you know, you have to write things on a sticky, sticky note. Uh, Walkie-talkie is really popular <laughs> after coronavirus. It, um, I, a lot of my friends uh, switched to walkie-talkies. That's crazy. Um, there are other, you know, conventional buttons they use as a buzzer. Uh, they, ha they had it since like the 80s. So they still use things like that as well. Um, and people use like, chat microsoft chat or you know team chat yeah, slack to, or know, something right? yeah yeah exactly but that's very inefficient for the clinical staff that's really good for the front desk people yeah. right to communicate with each other but you know clinical staff as you know you know like we are very we don't have time to really type and just chat online so if there's a way for us to click something one or two things to be able to you know ask somebody for help or uh, to gain any sort of uh, exchange, any sort of inform information, mm. I figured that would be really helpful. So that's the system I created. Um, and as a prototype, we just created something very simple. We're creating something very simple. Um, essentially, there will be a notification bar up on top of every screen, yeah. computer screen, and it will just announce there like a, like a string. It'll be great. It'll um, be great because you could have stuff like, I don't know, medical emergency, quick. Everyone knows you. You're right into action. Yeah. So I'm. I'm seeing. I'm seeing the uses already. So yeah, it's, it sounds really interesting. And 
I've seen I've seen the uh, the thing that you sent me earlier, which uh, looked pretty good, and I hope it's uh, going to come to fruition um, and as seamlessly as possible. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, hopefully, I mean, we we're using the world of legacy systems, not my office, and yeah. it's very similar to this, um, and it's, I mean, it's helping our team a lot already, you know, like the prototype version of it, so. Uh, if I can actually repackage this prototype to be made available for other offices too, you know, it'd be kind of cool to see how they can help them too. So yeah, I'm. I mean, I'm all for all sorts of technology within dentistry. I mean, um, myself, I'm probably someone who's very. You know, everyone knows I'm. I'm really forward in in um, and behind people getting to know each other across the internet and, and things like that, you know, um, which is how we've spoken, how I've spoken to so many people uh, and you're doing something with technology in a very different way. Uh, and I think there's definitely spaces for it within clinical environments, within the networks, within um, even like practice to labs, we can now send a scan digitally and it saves on so much. Um, for example, you'd have a courier anymore. You don't have to have, you know, call a guy to take your impression across and, you know, worrying about, I don't know, if you take an algae or something that it's going to shrivel up uh, by the time it gets to the lab and poured out. So very interesting how we can we can change the face of dentistry with these things. Yeah, I mean, it's minor things, but, you know, the way we communicate with each other, intro office and, you know, between offices too. Yeah. Uh, I feel like that's highly underdeveloped. So, you know, we'll see how it goes, you know, like um, with everything going on. Because the last, um, the previous, you know, generation, you know, it's been, you know, how can we switch from paper charts to uh, all the digital charts with electronic health record systems? Yeah. And then they figured out, okay, what, can, what else can they do? So they did appointment reminders to the patients directly to their cell phones because mails are getting outdated. Now, you know, over the past four years, you know, I last company I worked on was earlier care and I was I was trying to go on the trend of doing on of scheduling online. So we did online booking appointments uh, for dental offices and we could fill last minute cancellations. Oh, awesome, yeah. So that's becoming huge right now in all different uh, dental companies in the US. Um, so we'll see what the next trend goes to. Um, my bet is on Messenger. Facebook Messenger or something. Something yeah. like that. Or some sort of um, a communication device. Communication, some sort of efficient, a, commu a way of a communication method that makes sense for dental offices. Yeah. Urgent, like just clinics in general, uh, where it's fast paced uh, work environment where you know it's too impossible for us to type you know i i just envisioned that it's probably somewhere a hybrid between a walkie-talkie slash you know it could be a walkie-talkie slash you know probably uh some sort of um hybrid of two yeah so. i don't know if you've ever seen like uh, you're into your gaming i don't know if you've seen like streamers they have a, a stream mm -hmm. a stream yard or a, they have the, the Elgato stream deck. Maybe you could have something like that where you just tap a button and it's already programmed what <laughs> it's gonna do and you get the you get the response and everyone's just, you know, got a got a gut and got a deck down on the on the side of the chair or something. Yeah, that's actually uh the direction of the prototype. Uh, the way it is actually. Yeah, because I, I mean I I can imagine that that would be great. I, I've not got one yet. I, I think I'm I'm very close to getting to a point where i maybe need something like that especially when you do have you seen like some podcasts where they have a, a camera here and a camera there and then you've got all the guys in the room so obviously at the moment we have to do this remotely at some point we're going to do it in person with you know people who are um, more local but then you've got the full the full setup where you can see the whole room and everyone is around, sat around the table and if someone switches between different camera angles it just gets really really like uh highly produced Real. it just looks it looks like a, a tv show so uh one of my friends does that with his podcast and it's just wow it's, it's just so good <laughs> is that your goal i would love to yeah uh, that's that's kind of like what i'm thinking but it's a long way in the future you know we, we're gonna have to hit, kill the virus off first and then uh find a studio that we can actually do it in um 
So yeah, that, that's kind of, I can see all these ways of technology just improving and enhancing the way we're doing things. It's interesting you talk about scheduling because in the UK, once we have a, someone cancel, we have a, a short, we have a book or we have the, the place I was working in previously uh, had a book and, and you're like, okay, these guys have said that they can come at short notice and uh, you have to call each one individually. And you're like, oh, do you re- what do you reckon about this one? Like, yeah, no, uh, no, no, they're away. And then it's it. by the time you've got someone who can maybe come in, it's too late and, you know, the whole the whole uh, appointment's gone. But if you've got something, as soon as someone cancels, it just sends out an alert, can you come in? It'd be great. Um, so we're, we're behind yeah. the times. <laughs> yeah, I, wait one second. Yeah, no, exactly. Um, dude, I preached about that for like six years ago. Mm seven years ago, like before my dental school and during dental school, you know, when I did my, that startup, um, you know, I I couldn't believe that people were still doing it, you know, through the phone, even now, even to this day, people are doing it that way uh, because complete automation, you know, it shouldn't exist in a world where it's all about people operated by people and your customers are people. So, um, you know, complete automation may not be possible, but, you know, there should be a obvious way tasks. to use that. Yeah, exactly. Obvious tasks. Use those obvious tasks to narrow down your search. Just be more efficient. Yeah, I mean, so. let's just say you're you're working in a nice pri- private practice or something. Uh, and the, your front of house really, they should be more like, uh, not in a bad way, more like a waitress or a or a you know a maitre d maybe you know you know someone in a restaurant who's who's there to take care of the patient when they come in as opposed to doing menial administrative tasks you know like calling people and and all these sorts of things they're, they're more hospitality than they are an administrator surely and then if you have that someone who can go and say oh how are you doing today would you like a coffee or maybe coffee's not a bad idea if you're a little bit anxious would you rather have a chamomile tea or something you know you can look after the patient yeah. more instead of going Hi, can you, can you come in because we've had a cancellation? Spending the time doing that. Yeah, yeah I know. Like it's, it's it becomes more robotic mm. uh, by that point, you know, because at that point you're just calling them to be to fulfill, you know, your your uh, what do you call it, your job task, rather than you know trying to connecting or conversing with them to human to human. So yeah. No, yeah. it, it makes sense. Uh, what other kind of stuff are you into within uh, within tech and dentistry? What what have you seen that's really exciting you? Uh, dude, so actually out of all everything I just talked about, more than that, the biggest change is happening in the insurance and uh, and uh, what do you call it? Digital, reading digi- digital radiograph. Right. So I don't know anything about yeah. insurance in the States. Can you explain the whole system? To- well, you know, not the whole system. Very briefly, just outline dental insurance in the states, how it's set up a little bit. Because I've tried to get my head around it hundreds of times, and I'm just like, I mean, there's different insurances. Why they're why are there different ones? Uh, and and this one covers this, but it doesn't cover that. And then there's like there's ones where you have good patients and bad patients. What? Uh huh. I mean, you pretty much summarized it, right? <laughs> I mean. No one can explain how dental insurance works in the U.S. Well, they can, but it just it's everywhere, yeah. right? Even I don't have the full grasp of. I gotta be. I, I will be honest with you. I don't fully grasp um, how dental insurance works because yeah. each company is just so different, and every plan is very different. And right now, there's a. Oh. I don't want to single out a single insurance company, but it's there. Some of them make it very difficult for you to work with um, because they they will deny claims, um, and some of these claims are that are denied will be evaluated by a dentist from totally another state who's not licensed in your state. You know that's, um, and there's a lot of uh, I don't know, just so many different things going on with insurance. But the point is right now that's kind of changing for yeah. the good um and i don't know if it's good or bad actually <laughs> but uh you know digital gra- radiograph there are uh, companies like in boston um and in canada and europe that's using ai to analyze radiographs right 
and that's to diagnose. They also have that to diagnose caries, um, caries, root canals, procedures that were done, the crowns, you know, to identify them from the from just taking panel um, and vitamins. And there are companies that are there to automatically, you know, now detect implants because implants have been huge more or less for the last couple of decades and it's in only going to increase. Yeah, you're going to get right? more. Yeah. So, you know, those companies are actually on the rise and a lot of companies that want their service more immediately are two, well, two followings. Insurance companies who wants to, uh, some of the companies that want to automate the process and now if they can objectify and create that standard of care where it's more, it's not subjective anymore, it's following by right. the rules. So some insurance companies sees, see that as more benefit. Uh, that way there's no uh, loss in translation, no the dis- satisfaction because everyone's playing on the same rule, same playing field, uh, quote unquote. So... Um, was that clear? I think so. It's kind of like they're going to do the reporting of the x-rays kind of for you or they're going to... Yeah. yeah. Is, is, and it sounds like it's more for not the dentist almost. It's more for like, you know, companies who are appraising yeah. what work that's going to be being done and, and maybe like people who are trying to sue you or stuff like that, you reckon? Is, that's kind of how it sounds like. Maybe. Well, yeah, that sounds, that's, that's a possibility. <laughs> Yeah, I I think it, I think it's interesting because obviously you you know as a dentist you you want to take ownership of your X-rays. You know if you're if you're taking an X-ray, you don't want some computer to tell you what you should or should be doing. I think it'd be good as a tool that just points things out, but you should do your own an analysis because you know if the computer misses something that you might not have done, then then you get in trouble. And then I suppose maybe the other way around, you might miss something. The computer tells you that oh, there's something you maybe didn't spot there, and maybe. Maybe there's a, a a balance to be made there for for clinicians. Right. I mean, get to a point where a machine will tell tell everything. Uh, and you're right. They're probably going to use it as a way to guide, um, just so that it's more efficient, right? Yeah. If ninety percent of what is already uh, kind of pre-diagnosed, right? It's all you have to do is go back and confirm and look for any other things that you uh, the machine have may missed. So. We'll see how that plays out, but yeah, it's really hard to predict how, how, how anyone will be using that kind of technology. I think it'd be good for um, panos, you know, for like sinus stuff, you know, because, you know, sometimes I'm looking at sinus yeah. and I'm like, I don't know what's going on there. I, I remember we looked at something, you know, is, is that one bigger than that side? Does that, you know, have some granulation in there? And and sometimes like, I, yeah. it's, it's difficult, you know, with the, some of these panoramics, obviously with a PA. You know, a periapical or a, a bite wing is more our bread and butter. So you're kind of, you're kind of sorted there. But yeah, I mean, sinus stuff is is weird, and condyles and and all these, uh, you know, less dental but still within our remit, but don't really touch it very much. They're a bit more difficult. Yeah, I mean, hey, everything. But you know, I, the future I see with you know digital AI like this is that. It becomes it allows anyone to be able to diagnose, self-diagnose, mm. and seek help if needed. Meaning nowadays everything is becoming home generated, home gym, you know, home workouts, you know, homemade food. With the pandemic, it kind of made it clear that in or they made more things that you can do at home. Home whitening, take home whitening where it wasn't possible before. Now we whiten our teeth all the time to uh, you know those uh, what do you call it? Uh, direct smile club. Oh god! You, you don't have to go see a dentist, and yeah, I mean it's a terrible thing to kind of see as a. Dentist, have you seen cases but... come back yourself? That some. Yes, I've seen that. Okay, should we should we <laughs> yeah, tell some stories? Because I've got one that I can think of, and I love telling the story. Uh, it was bad. So the guy came back, and uh, what did you see? And I could still fit my fist through his anterior open bite. Uh oh man, yeah. Yeah, it, yeah, that's pretty terrible. And but the thing is, you know, the guy's paid thousands of pounds, and because you paid thousands of pounds, you're on the defensive. Yeah, I know it's better than it was before. I'm just like, okay, fine, whatever. I don't do it ortho, but you know, I would have told you, you know, just spend a little bit extra, go get someone who knows what they're doing. You'd have had a much better result, dude. But you know what? They really opened up. What's that? 
Well, they kind of opened up uh, patients' expectations as we kind of got to understand what people wanted, right? People, Direct Smile Club basically proved out that people rather do get that shit than done at home than going to a dentist. Yeah. Themselves. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. The demand of the people. There's sure there's still like a lot of patients who rather come in to get a lot of these work done. Do you not think it's but just the cost? At, like, sure, cost is one thing. Who never know? You, you, you never know if it's just a cost, mm. right? Or a convenience, or maybe a combination of the two. You know, the point of the matter is Drex Smile Club won over that many patients to sign up with them. I think. Let just let oh, no, there's it. something very enticing about you know their advertising strategy. I just think that they've skirted rules and maybe endangered a lot of teeth at the same time. Um, because you know, if, if you're not, if, if, you're, if you know as well as I, if you're sending someone to ortho, things go wrong, and more frequently, we more frequently than you would like to you know, admit as, you know, yeah, it's all good. And it's usually down to compliance. It's usually down to the patient's OH. If they're going home and just taking it from a scan and, you know, they don't get this drilling that we give them about, you need to, you need to do this, you need to do that. You need to make sure you're flossing and brushing properly and all that, you know, things, things could go wrong pretty quickly. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm preaching for the choir here because there's a load of dentists watching this, but yeah. Um, yeah. That's just my worry there. Yeah, definitely. And I think more because of that, you know, it's seeing, well, seeing that happening, mm. I realized, wow, you know, at some point, if there's like a digital AI, dental AI, they basically can self diagnose to some extent in any way. What if you can carry around a diagnostic dental tool in your pocket mm. someday? Just putting it out there that. It's a possibility. I'm sure and they're trying. When that time comes, I'm sure uh, they're trying. Oh yeah, I'm sure, dude. Like the automa automa automatically diagnosing it through X-ray, that itself shows the possibility of mm. that. There are other companies, such as like uh, there are other companies like uh, Dentugo or uh, I forgot the name of the company right now, but they help any patients to basically take photos of their arches and teeth through their smartphone right. at home. To monitor the trays. So for Invisalign cases, this is so that the uh, doctors can monitor the, their cases without the patient needing to come in. Yeah, people are getting lazier, aren't they? Mm -hmm. That's what it is. People yeah. are getting really, really lazy. And they would much rather sit at home and, you know, not do something, you know, where they could previously go, go and get in the car and pick up a takeaway. No, now, now someone has to yeah. come and bring it to you. From from a phone, and you're not actually going to touch your phone. You're going to say, "Alexa, get me X Y Z," or "Hey Siri, order me whatever." You're not even going to touch the the the, the phone anymore. So I think it's uh, it's really interesting the way that the world's going there. I know. I mean, a lot of us probably are waking up to this, and some days I'm like, "Yeah, man, I kind of start relying on my phone and all these, you know, <laughs> automations kind of stuff." But uh, it can help. It. It's convenient. And yeah. it provides so much value to our day-to-day -day life that it's hard to give up. Yeah, I think you just need to make sure we 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 strike that balance on a personal level. I'm I'm on my phone too much for yeah. sure. I need to get off my phone at times, you know. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm on my phone right now. <laughs> yeah, this yeah this is the thing. It's a I mean COVID COVID after COVID and maybe I'm gonna be taking like definitely a week off. Definitely a week off, like replying to anyone i'll maybe just uh jump on post and and then leave just to keep it up otherwise you know how things are the algorithm will kick you off and you're in the bad books for not posting but other than that i'm gonna be i'm gonna be silent for a bit <laughs> <laughs> wow yeah i props to you if you can do that though oh um yeah I, i've kind of got sick of being on 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 stuff recently uh so i think i think a week you can do pretty easily then then you start getting the itch of what's going on and who's doing what and you know catching up with people from across the globe and stuff yeah dude i've been like off inst uh off twitter um this whole month the election i tried to because it's like yeah the election and everything i'm like you know what i 
I don't want to hear it anymore. Yeah. <laughs> I'm getting sick of it. I'm Canadian, by the way. <laughs> but you know, it, being in America, the it yeah, sure, decisions made matter mm. to me. But at the same time, I need to be you know, cut off myself off from the. Uh, the social media as much as I can, and <laughs> that's why I won't. <laughs> I won't watch the news. I, I just don't watch the news. I I hate watching the news. I don't mind reading it because yeah. I can quickly skim and say, okay, yeah, that's happened. Cool. I'll, I'm I'm off now. But the news is like they they give you their slant and their idea and and like they tell you what to think. Mm-hmm. I'm just like, oh, like, like yeah, the opinion, yeah, yeah. You yeah. you you're right in the middle of it. CNN, NBC, whatever. Box or yeah, they're all the same, really. <laughs> yeah, um, I was gonna ask you something. I completely forgotten um what I was gonna ask you actually, but we'll move on. Uh, so w- tell me about the jobs that you currently you you've worked and the job you're currently in. How how are they going? Uh, as good as it can be, really. <laughs> like um, I work for um Emerson Dental, and you know my boss, my team, they're very amazing. Yeah. And keeping things you know up to date and safe for both you know the staff and the patients uh, as well, especially. Um, and you know, new equipment. He would not flinch in a just for the idea of making us safe. So, you know, as a response, we made videos uh, for our patients. Welcome back. What to expect? Yeah. And it's helped a lot of our patients to find comfort and more comfort for coming in. So. You know, it's been good, knock on wood, so far. <laughs> yeah, and then what what kind of a what kind of a job are you doing? Is it just general dentistry at the moment, or are you doing much more, much less? Uh yeah, no, general dentistry. I always I only do that general dentistry. So most likely, you know, any all the restorative I'll do mm. as much as I can, like crowns, fillings, you know, implant crowns, but. Uh, we are a multi-specialty office, so uh, which is a rising trend more so in the U.S. right now. Um, so that's, and we have endodontists who do root canals and periodontists. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. And we do hygiene work. Uh, hygienists do it without using the Kevitron. All right, so, no. okay. Yeah, so hand scaling, <laughs> minimize aerosol. Uh, so that sounds like an absolute nightmare. Uh, I hate I hate scaling at the best of times. I have to do it by hand. Oh, that would do my head in. <laughs> I... They're good at it. They're really good at it. Yeah, and, and they seem to enjoy it as well, which is all props to them. You know, um, I just don't have the patience. I I don't have the patience for most things. I'm just like, yeah, I just want to do endos, and I like I like posterior units. You know, onlays and stuff like that. Um, but anything, anything which is more cosmetic i'm I'm kind of like I'll, I'll step away i'm like you know someone else can do that stuff yeah yeah exactly cosmetics <laughs> i need to take more courses yeah you have to do you have to do loads of courses and do you do you think the patients are way more like they're pickier and they, they're pointing out is this they should be a little bit more curved and, and like are they straight are they really straight though could it get a bit whiter you know you know the kind of patient you, you'll get who's really really picky about the tiniest details yeah yeah, I uh, our our I'm in the suburbs, yeah. so you know I don't you know work with many patients like that as much. Um, but at the same time, I I mean, the worst I have my mentor <laughs> to help me out. <laughs> so I'll be like, I just work cases with him, and he's been awesome. Yeah, the, I remember there was one particular case where someone came in, and the request was, I want the fakest looking teeth possible. Kind of, like like a bleached like piano she was like piano keys uh like yeah all of that um geordie shaw uh, jersey Sh- jersey shaw for you guys it would have been wouldn't it um what's the other ones love island you, you know all the all these like reality tv consistent shows where the, you look at the teeth i don't understand like, that <sighs> i've seen that before i refused actually <laughs> it's it's crazy uh hi hassan in the comments how you doing man uh, yeah, it's crazy. I, I I think it just looks it looks too much. I I do like white teeth, you know. We don't like orange teeth, yellow teeth, and all that. But there's like a there's a point where you go, okay, now you've gone too far, and you kind of got to stop there, don't you? 
Yeah. I mean, how wide have you gotten? Have you have you treated those patients before? I I always refuse. I'm saying oh, I'm sure there's someone out there that can do it for you. Because <laughs> the yeah, as an associate in the UK, it's it's absolutely not worth it. The patient might be paying 16k. Your take home will be two. And for the amount of time and effort that goes into it, it's just not worth the your time. Now with the headaches. Yeah, expense expensive lab work as well, isn't it? So you're just like you know what I'm. I'm sure someone else can take this headache on. <laughs> yeah. I mean, maybe someday if I take more courses, I'll be able to, I'll be at a point, hopefully, <laughs> I can confidently say yes. Yeah, no, no. But, uh, that's, that's fair. Yeah, just like I'm too early in my career to be thinking about that. Yeah, and you have to be passionate about that kind of treatment, which it sounds like you've got a bit more passion on that side than, than I do. I I just like the very, wow, what's going on there? Is that a huge bottle of Listerine? Uh Oh yeah, drinking water. It's actually water. Okay, it's not. You're not drinking Listerine. That's fine. <laughs> yeah, I'm mean, nuts. Uh, did you see Ben um, knee dental? He did a. He did that that reel, and he's he's in the car. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, Ben. I talked to him. I talked to him. Talked to him about that. That was actually really. Uh, he sent me the video, and he goes, "This is the the song you have to do." And he goes, "It's going to take you 20 minutes to get the timing right between like when." when the song comes on and stuff and it was so hard i really props dude that guy is a genius i think he's like very smart and creative he he was a lot of fun we spoke to him because he'd been sending me some absolute bangers i was like look bro i have to speak to you on the podcast and he was fun he was like he's all about the golf he's all about his fitness and yeah he you can honestly just talk to ben for hours it was great um but yeah some of do you see the one with his mom yeah <laughs> i was like <laughs> I was like, bro, this is your mom's Instagram now. It's not yours anymore. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, that was really funny. Yeah, I actually need to ask him to send me that one because I'll, I'll definitely repost that. I think that's the good, that's a good uh, midway between dental and non-dental. And anyone who's like immigrant immigrant family can just like, yeah, I, I understand that 100%. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, I think, what do you call it? He has like 800,000 views on that. I think so, yeah. La last checking, yeah completely yeah, smashed crazy. it but you know reels just don't do anything for your uh your followers oh it doesn't it's so crap i i posted a couple from do you know dr farage um the the very attractive Ameri uh the Ar arab american guy and he's got like half a million tiktok followers or whatever i posted two or three of his videos and they got hundreds and hundreds of thousands of views almost no difference from the day before to the day after in terms of followers. I was like, it's crazy, but you know, it's, it's fun and I want the page to be as fun as possible. So I'll keep posting them. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how that works. Really. Is, do, have you ever spoken to any uh, Instagram uh, experts? What, what is an Instagram? Are you like someone from Instagram? Like an actual. Yeah. Like, just curious like i have no idea how this algorithm works <laughs> so i know how it works for t for the reels thing i have no idea because it's so new um yeah but as far as i can tell the shorter the video the better and then it's the usual thing where if you have a little story that's going on mm. you're going to play the whole story and then there'll be the funny part you know like i don't know someone gets water dumped on the head at some point just example, you know, you know that door trick. Let's just use that as a, an example. Someone goes to the door and, the, and the, the bucket of water falls on their head. You're going to take that half a second clip of the water falling on their head and play that first, but cut it off short before it actually happens. And then you play the full clip because you've already hooked them. They kind of know what's coming and then they have to watch the yeah. whole thing to see it. So that grabs the attention. It's called the hook and then the story or something. So that's one way you can do it. And, and that's... I've seen a lot of that, that kind of thing works really well. Um, but yeah, in terms of actually getting people to to follow off the back of a a reel, it's been a bit weird so far. I've not really seen much of a correlation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a uh, it's a bit different. Um, how's your how's your stuff been going on on Instagram? Uh, to be honest with you, I've been kind of off. I've not of seen it. you post um, anymore, yeah, or not not too frequently anyway. Yeah, because like I didn't really see an, my end goal with it, with um, yeah. growing it. I was actually pretty happy just 
you know, connecting with, you know, people like you and yeah, no, Ben was... and other, yeah, other, other people on Instagram because we can't really go to conferences to meet people anymore yeah. right now. Yeah. So, you know, right now I'm just using that to, you know, connecting with other <laughs> like-minded uh, young dentists. All the fun um, people. Like us. <laughs> All the fun people. That's right. Yeah. That's what yeah. it feels like. Like, because do you find like your audience self-selects for the people who just get you? Yeah. That's what I really like about Instagram because you, no one's, you've not forced anyone to hit that that follow button or the like button or whatever. Like the people who message you, they they already kind of get you, and because of that, you, you kind of have a rapport instantly, and you can just chat. So it's it's great that way. Um, well, I, I, I do I do enjoy, it, although I do need a holiday from it because it's been six months nonstop since February <laughs> of doing these. You've been posting yeah. it. Yeah, you've been posting like crazy. How, how, well, how, what was the increase in followers? On Dentist of Insta, I was at around 13k as we went into lockdown, maybe 14. And we're now at what, 38? So. <gasps> what a growth, man. We, I hit it hard. I went insane. I was posting nine times a day. During, during lockdown 1.0, we're now in 2.0. Um, I knew everybody was going to be sat on their phones doing nothing. <laughs> so I said, okay, nine features a day minimum. And I'm going to get hold of as many people as I can. And I'm going to do a live every single day, sometimes twice a day. And it just went boom up craziness. So. So around this time next year, it'll be what? Around 100 I hope. I'm, 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 I'm pouring all my energy into youtube now because i feel like instagram is fun and it's stable you know it's, it's growing at a stable rate but youtube is where i can speak to people and that's what i really enjoy so uh you know having a chat with you i, I can chat with people for three hours without even thinking yeah dude dude that's a that's a gift it's because no it's because it's interesting people and if you're able to find people interesting and ask them questions then then it's uh it's you know it's not even it's not even difficult on my part so yeah and, and also no more thumbs and texting because my, my thumbs are screwed man they're gone <laughs> i was actually kind of surprised you actually responded to my messages i respond to every message unless it's an obvious someone trying to sell me something or someone just oh, yeah. being creepy which actually i've got if anyone's not seen it yet i've got a twitter thread of all the creepy dms people have sent thinking that I am the girls that I've been posting. So you can check that out. I've been flaming him on Twitter and no one knows. What? I didn't realize you had a Twitter account uh, too. I, on Twitter, I, it's just me just moaning about stuff. It's where I get, it's where, it's where I get. <laughs> I gotta I follow just, you I just get to moan about football. I moan about whatever. And then just random weird shower thoughts or whatever. So you probably, yeah, you, <laughs> you guys probably shouldn't follow me on Twitter. It's, uh, you, you'll be like, who the heck's this weird guy? <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I've, I've done that. Um, so yeah, where where do you reckon your practice is going to end up? You're going to go further into cosmetics uh, or restorative? I mean, yeah, I mean that's bread and butter dentistry. Mm. So, I mean, over time, I want to be able to take those more courses, um, and I just want to be a better dentist. I mean, that's my long term goal. Um, I don't know an office. I like where I'm working right now. Yeah. Um, you know, I do want to, you know, figure out what I, because like dentistry is not my end goal, right? It's it's one. I it's part like, of this the picture. Yeah, I mean, I, I joined it because I just I like helping people, and dentistry is a way to provide one of the ways to provide instant gratification towards someone who needs help yeah. right because you're getting someone out of pain discomfort agony based on the looks or based on the you know actual like the dental uh illness that they're facing like abscess you know if you can drain it for them help them you know out of pain just being in this position is great but you know that's i feel like that's just i see it more like a less of a job than a it's more like a hobby for me that's interesting i yeah i always saw it that way you know 
And I saw dentistry a way for me to, you know, provide and just connect with my people around me uh, and be able to be of help. But my biggest, I feel like my biggest passion is I'm trying so, I think, sorry, I don't even know what it is. I'm trying to find it right now. Um, yeah, it's... You're trying to find that calling, yeah, like that, that higher purpose yeah. or... Um whatever you want to call it along those you know it's, it's that like it's that yeah it's the calling is the word isn't it it's that higher purpose and calling of, of what your life's going to be about that's what you're, you're you're searching for a little bit yes yeah exactly i um i have general idea of what the next thing i should work on or what the ideas are but the thing is you know my heart isn't there mm. um so i haven't been able to focus more on that um because i think the next because like my head is telling me hey george why don't you just spend most of your downtime on building tele telemedicine telemedicine because right. i think there's a huge feature in that uh covid kind of broken the you know lower the entry and now we have to be able to prove to patients and general public that hey teledentistry Telemedicine is here to stay, and there needs to be more value uh, to be provided to mm -hmm. them to be able to use them. Right now, it's it's barely scratched surface, and the way I see it, you know, um, making videos for patients, like those educational videos, post up pre up videos, you know, um, after you know whether if it's ex tooth ex extraction, right? My girlfriend just got through uh, got some um, tooth extractions and. The doctor didn't go even go through the post-op instructions fully. She has it all written down, but it's confusing. It's not coming from a, another person. Now, if that that dentist or surgeon had um, had had this, what do you call it? Um, had an instruction video, right? And he goes as if like he's right in front of you. That's a totally different story, right? You're getting having that explained by your dentist who did the surgery yeah. on you. So it has a a lot different profound impact so i recorded some but i hated how i sounded <laughs> i recorded huh? some but i hated how i sounded so i never i never got around to posting them what? i don't know there was just something about i got the lighting a bit wrong and the sound was a bit tinny and i i didn't like it so i was just like no nah, i'm gonna have to are you just really picky very picky yeah yeah <laughs> you're perfectionist aren't i mean you? yeah i mean if you've seen like i'm i'm now using the blue mic which has been a game changer. If I switch now, guys, to the old mic, you'll actually hear it. And I'll switch back because I don't want to ruin the audio for the whole time. But you'll be able to hear the old mic. And then... Wow. Yeah, so different. The, the Blue Yeti. Uh, that's how I wanted to go to. Like he was thinking, how can he do some CE courses and stuff like that of live demonstration, and yeah. there was issues of you know surgery sounds and all these kinds of things. So after we did the the live, we spoke about that for a bit, and so he's gonna go away and think about how he can create that kind of content because he doesn't like doing lectures. Uh, he he kind of made that very clear, and he's like, look, I'd rather do something in my own way. So. There might be something to see from uh, BTG coming out soon. Mm. Yeah. Well, yeah. You like other than tele dentistry, telemedicine. Yeah, like doing CEs online, live demonstration. Yeah. That's probably gonna be huge again, or continue to be huge. I, I prefer I prefer that actually because, you know, CE. Again, yeah, you get the the communal aspect of meeting your fellow fellow dentists, but if you're just if you just need to get a couple of more hours in because you need to get up to the, the minimum requirement and you don't have the time to take up a whole day and go somewhere and a couple of hours each week, you know, you can get through it all. And then, you know, you can still go to all these conferences and instead of actually going to any of the lectures, just go around the, the trade show and chat to people instead, you know, that's probably the best way to do yeah. it. Dude, I just, I'd just rather just get drinks and get drunk. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> that, that was the thing. Chicago is, uh, I was in Chicago just before everything went to, to, to pot and it was amazing 
Was I you? met. Yeah, yeah, I was. Uh, I was at Midwinter. Um. Oh no way! I didn't know you back then. Otherwise, I'd have, I'd have given you a shout. And uh, true, it was true, great. True. I got to meet Brett Gilbert. Do you know the guy from? Oh, Brett Gilbert. Yeah, I know. I know him. I'm I'm close with him now. I've met the guy once in real life. We've done three or four lives, and I would say he's a close friend now. Just just like that, you can make all these connections. And if I had to go to loads and loads of uh, lectures, um, which I went to a few, but you have less chance to make those little connections and stuff. What's this P two? Frontier Dental Lab, you know uh, Gil Vilvecca. Oh yeah, yeah, I yeah, I follow that uh, page. Yeah, so he's he's another good guy, good guy, um, and he's he's really in, into helping his dentists. You know the guys that he provides the treatment with by you know showcasing their work and stuff, giving them patience. So you know I met all these guys who are doing interesting things just by going to to the states, and it was definitely worth it for me. So yeah, yeah, it's uh, how far was the flight for you? Um, I think how far was the flight? How many hours? I yeah, I think it was seven hours. I did a bit of a weird tour though. I went to North Carolina first um, mm. to see some family, and then we went to Detroit again to see more family. Then I went to Chicago and then went home. So I did a little of a loop. A loop. I want to go to New York next time. Would you ever come to uh, USA to practice? Um, Brett is hounding me to come to Chicago to do endo. <laughs> so. Oh, like so you can just specialty. That he 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 would love me to because he he teaches on that program, doesn't he? And he's like, yeah, come, it'd be fun. I just don't see myself living in the states. Um, it's a much different way of life to to the UK or yeah. to you know any of these other places. I would love to do the program. Maybe if there's a chance I can go do the program, then come back. That'd be cool. I'll uh, we'll have to see. Um, I don't know, man. Most people who go come to USA, they they really do it. Actually, I knew that I was gonna say here, but <laughs> a lot of my friends uh, did like their residency yeah. program. Uh, they all decided to stay. So. And they did the uh, as an external dentist. You mean? So they came in having done yeah, like, international BDS dentists. or DDS or what's the other one? Whatever it is, a D. I can't remember. There's three, isn't there? BDS, DDS. I can't remember the other one. But yeah, you done the dentistry somewhere else. So they haven't done the DDS in the the states, and then they did the specialty program. And then decide to stay. Mm. So they've either done that way, or they've just gone straight to the uh, you know specialty first, and then get the DDS pro two year program. Okay. Um, yeah, maybe. Did they find yeah. some some lucky lady? You know, husbands and wives when they came over. Is that what happened? Uh, I'm sure it does happen to people. I can, I can that imagine happens. that maybe you know? why you're stuck. You know, you're just like, not stuck, but you know, you, your mind gets swayed, and you're like, okay, maybe I have to stay now. Um, well, yeah, I mean that, and also I think it also has to do with what you hear from residents, the life, what the life mm. is like. You imagine hearing that two, three years while Dude. you're in residency, mm. especially during the residency, it's probably one well, of the lower part of your life where you're constantly stressed working out, hard, yeah. you know, wicked working hard. So the only thing you hear are people around you. You know, that gives a lot of <laughs> influence. Uh yeah. I, yeah. I can see I can see the um the appeal. I think the place that I would move of the places that I've been to that I would definitely move to is Australia. Wow, that place. Oh. oh it's like what is it like? What have you heard? I, w I, w I went. Uh, oh, my, you went? I went. My friends were working there. So I, I met up with a couple of the guys who did uh, dentistry in, in Newcastle where I went. And a group of four of them, uh, plus a couple of girlfriends and stuff, they all dentists moved over there. And they're like, yeah, so we just go to Fiji and Bali on the weekends. And then, you know, we don't work as hard as we did in the UK. You get paid the same amount. I was like, okay, sounds interesting. And... You're literally wherever you are in Australia, unless for some reason you decide to live in the middle where there's nothing, wherever you are, you're walking distance from the beach. Mm. And that's just like, okay, this is this is interesting now because what am I going to do? Okay, uh, it's, it's a nice day. Uh, I've finished work at 3 p.m. Sunset's 7, four hours on the beach. Uh, don't mind me. I'll just take my Kindle and, and read, pick up a 
smoothie or a coffee or whatever you feel like and, and just chill out. And that's literally what they do. Everyone, they're just on the beach all the time after work. Hmm. Yeah, that's not, that does sound pretty nice. Yeah, I, I, I was very swayed. I was like, I don't want to go home. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but it's it's very far away. It's it, that was flight back from Australia was twenty seven hours, including the stop. Oh, because you had to go around. Yeah, that was long. Yeah. It's tough. Yeah, I think from South Korea, if you go directly to it, it's a lot closer. But man, if you're like living in the States or in Europe, it's going to be tough. Long flight. Yeah, but I mean, if your whole life's there, then, you know, it's fine. You're not going to have to do that very many times. But if you were to move, if, if we were to move or something, you know, family stays here, then you're going to go see your parents. It's a, it's a long old, it's a long, you, you lose a day there and back. So, yeah, interesting. But it's an incredible place. Yeah. My favorite place that I've been to outside of Europe. I think the other place was Turkey. I could definitely see myself living in Turkey, Istanbul. Oh, you went to Turkey too? Istanbul, you could 100% live in Istanbul. It's just a very chilled out, very slow slow pace of life. Coffee and tea shops and dessert places open till 2 a.m. Um, just on every street corner. So yeah, that, that's somewhere I could see myself as well. Wow. Wow, you've been to a lot of places. <laughs> I try not to stay at home too much. <laughs> COVID's really hit me hard. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, it must be, really. Yeah. Can't go anywhere right now. Yeah. And oh, well, what's your next best destination once uh, things come down a little? Um, probably back towards the Middle East. Uh, I've got family that we need to see, so that's probably it's probably a family visit. Probably the, mm. the first thing. Um. Other than that, I've been invited to a few places after, on the back of these podcasts. So there's a bunch of guys in South Africa who are clamoring for me to come and have a little look around their cities and stuff like that. Um, oh, that's got to be interesting. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Lex is a cool guy. He He's in Durban, I think. And there's a lot of history in South in Africa. I, I haven't been around Africa enough. Um, but yeah, that'd be interesting. I don't know. I don't know. We'll we'll have to see. We'll just see what 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 flights are cheap and then and go for it. Yeah. Uh, what's your traveling like? Well, where have you been? The best place that you could see yourself live in, or just the most chill place you've been? I wish I had done more of that. <laughs> I mean, it was always kind of planned for the future. Mm -hmm. But hello, COVID. Hello. You know. Um, uh, I don't know, man. I, I want to travel more Europe. Um, definitely want to try Italy, UK. <laughs> definitely got to go to UK. Oh, you, you've got to come uh, in the uh, summer because the UK and unless you like that feel of the cold, UK in the winter is maybe like not the place you want to be. <laughs> oh, really? It's the summer? I I think the best time to come to the UK is probably like August September time because you're starting to get a bit of. Uh, you get the the heat from the summer is, is warmed up the whole place and then it's not too cold everything looks nice um i think it's probably the best time to come during winter if it snows it'd be amazing mm. but otherwise it's just biting cold rain which is no fun dude i, I don't know I, I i the only one reason why i want to visit uk is because of the premier league <laughs> i could i could i can i can hook you up there with some games i'm I'm there every week when we're allowed in the stadiums. <laughs> yeah. In fact, that's probably the main reason I, 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 I hesitate when I think about moving away. Yeah. Oh, yeah, really? Yeah, I'm just thinking, well, okay, fine. I move away. I have to give up my ticket. Secondly, do I have to get up at 4 a.m. to watch the game? Because that's what it's like for you guys, right? It's really, really early. Uh, no, actually, I, most, most of my games, I watch it at like 1 Two twelve in the afternoon. You're, you're an East Coaster, right? Okay. Yeah, yeah, East Coast. It's only like we're slower by like four or five hours. Yeah, it's not too bad. Not too bad. I can just imagine it being horrible if, if you're in like California, where, where it's nine hour difference. Yeah. And the the midday game that we had today. What's that? Three a.m. I <laughs> just like no chance. Uh, I know. Or if you're in Asia right now, like my friends tell me that if they were to watch the mm -hmm. game. You had to get up at four a.m. 4 in the morning. Couldn't do it. I'd, I'd have to find somewhere which is on the same latitude, uh, longitude. 
and then, and then stick that <laughs> stick with that. <laughs> Couple of hours either way, oh. that's doable. Have you ever seen yourself like moving to another part of Europe? I like I like the idea of Italy. Um, you know, they, they've got amazing dentists out there. Actually, you know, some of the really top cutting edge dentists dentistries in Italy uh, historically. So that could be interesting to to learn off those guys. Um, <laughs> Italian is such a cool language as well, but I reckon it'd be really difficult to learn. Um, I don't know. I th I think I think probably Turkey would be the place. It's kind of Europe. That would be the, that would be the place that it's, it's very metropolitan actually. Very kind of like European slash Asian. It's like the mixing part of the, of, uh, of the world almost. Yeah, uh, yeah. Actually, those are one of the places I used to be uh, huge on Greek mythology right. <laughs> growing up. So you know, uh, Istanbul, like in you know Greece, so all those regions, I always had this um, profound interest in. It's incredibly so, beautiful in all of these Mediterranean countries as well. Like the architecture is beautiful, and the yeah. and the scenery as well. So yeah, and very rich in history too. Yeah, like you probably if you went around Istanbul, you need two, three, maybe even four weeks to see all the sites. There's that much. Really? There's that much. It's just insane. Unless you do some insane, we're gonna see five things in a day sort of thing, which is not chill. It's like that's that would be stressful for me. Oh man, yeah, dude. Like my dream trip will be like, like, well, Turkey is one of those places, mm. but like Egypt is like the place I really want to visit. Yeah, I've not been to Egypt. Uh, I don't think I've been to Egypt. No. Egypt? No. When you go, thought about when going? you go, hit me up. Yeah, dude. Like we can like go. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, backpack trip. Uh, right be on top of the ter not caramel. The pyramids in that. Yeah. I forgot the name of the animal that with the uh Oh the Sphinx. Camel, camel, camel. Oh the camel. Oh wow, like green part. But yeah. Oh man. I was thinking what's he what's he doing with this? Is he talking I was like talking about like the, <laughs> the Is he riding stuff. the waves? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I guess so. Uh this is what Corona does to you. Yeah, you just your brain goes to mush. Yeah, seriously. Just too many hours of uh YouTube consumption, you know. This, this uh, guys, for everyone watching, there's no such thing as too many hours of YouTube consumption as long as it's on <laughs> Hot Pot Podcast. Everything else is secondary. Please make sure to subscribe, like, comment, sign up to Patreon, become a guest. <laughs> You're not allowed to say that. <laughs> <laughs> I like how you just saved it. <laughs> just, uh, am I am I supposed to tell off my guests? I don't I don't think so. <laughs> Oh man! No, what, what what do you think? Um, as your as your mindset and life changed during due, due to COVID, like your overall goals and how you see things going? Because mine definitely has. Like I saw myself, you know, working really hard six days. A, even I was thinking, oh, should I do six days a week in dentistry? Um, and then since COVID, I've gone. Oh, there's there's more to there's more to life. You know, I want to do. I'm going to start that podcast that I've been banging on about to my friends and and haven't bothered with. Uh, do all these other things. Do you think it's changed for you? Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, kind of restricted in how many, how much you can mm. work, really, right? And it also, I think more or less, this whole period got me to think a lot more in depth as to what yeah. I want to do. You know, um, <clears throat> uh, even now I'm still kind of exploring while working on this project. Um. So, yeah, dude, I, it's definitely changed what I wanted to do. Um, but I think it's good that we have to just have this moment in our lives where we have to sit back, take a few steps back, reassess where we are at, and make sure to decide on what you really what enjoy really doing. What matters to you. you know? yeah. Because I think that's the thing. Yeah, it's... Because you're happy. I mean, happiness. One of the goals in life that I don't know if I'm sure many of you us agree is that it's our happiness, right? Ours and family, our friends, just overall happiness. Where you know we're not constantly worried about these things, but that like, worry about why am I doing this in my part yeah. of my life? Rather, they're just 
happy what they're doing, where they are, who they're with, you know, that's the goal that we want to reach. And to be honest with you, I never thought of happiness as part of my quote unquote success. I think it's difficult to define it sometimes, you know, in a way, some, isn't it? Because it really is. I think, I think for me, I, I wouldn't use the, ha- the word happiness. I think, I think happiness is a state of, you know, day to day, you know, oh, I'm, I'm having a good day or a bad day. I think for me, it's more like I'm content with what I'm doing or I'm like enthused or inspired by whatever I'm trying to achieve. Like, I, you know, like my mind is engaged by it. I don't want to be doing something where I'm very mindless. Like the, the task becomes menial and mindless and I'm not thinking about it. I want to be like within that moment. I'm actually thinking about what I'm doing because it's it's stimulating me in some way. Yeah, no, that's that's true. That's very fair. Yeah, I I think a lot of people have seen this kind of difference as well. You know, from forums that I'm on and stuff. I I think you see a lot of a lot of people changing what their goals are. So yeah, it's it's interesting to see that you you've got the same thing as well. <laughs> yeah man still still looking for it though yeah. you know um what do you think like do you think we're going to go back to the same point as where we were before in terms of dentistry and how people are treating you like, know the patient flow do you think we'll get back to that fast pace patient in patient out patient in patient out or do you think it'd be a little bit more relaxed Over time, you know, that's definitely a possibility. Mm. You know, I mean, people already have this COVID fatigue and constantly people constantly want to get back to what's normal. You know, it's um, at some point there's with the vaccine, if it's successful, it would, you know, it's, it's working and everything. Just if every, in the long term of things, probably you're right. Um, Maybe let me rephrase but, and be like, do you want it to go back to exactly uh, how things were no, before? That's a different question. Yeah. Um, what do you mean? Like, for example, in the UK, I don't know how your, your work was. We, I was on an NHS job. I spoke to you about this before. And we were seeing yeah. up to 30 patients a day, 10 to 15 minutes checkup max. And flying them in flying them out so that's including your notes including looking at everything explaining what treatment plan you've decided on explaining you know what they need to do and how to look after themselves so obviously it was very very rushed so for me i wouldn't want to go back to that hyper hyperactive state of you know flinging patients in and out of a surgery essentially you know that's what it kind of felt like mm-hmm. a little bit um right so for me i wouldn't want it to go the whole way back i want it to be have you heard of the slow dentistry movement? I'm sorry, what? Have you heard of the slow dentistry movement? It's where they're, they're advocating people just take the time and do things as well as you can instead of as fast as you uh, can. Rushing through. Yeah. That really, that really, like, I'm just like, yes, that's what I'm after. So for me, I wouldn't want things to go back. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I. It, if that's the case, then yeah, I would, I would agree, you know. Um, for me though, like, I think it's a little different yeah. because I'm at a very boutique office and because we have multiple doctors here, I fish tanks, you know, and I get to spend more time with my patients. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, I know it's the associate life. Wipe right? on, <laughs> wax on, wax off. I know. Yeah. That was actually my boss commenting it? on it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The way of the, yeah, that made me laugh. <laughs> yeah he's pretty funny but yeah you, you, um, you're in a, you're a bit more of an upmarket practice so maybe you weren't quite working at that breakneck speed that maybe some of us in the in the nhs were yeah uh, i mean i used to work in a practice like mm. that you know when i first started um but i agree i couldn't produce because that i couldn't provide the care uh that you would want you you just things will get missed yeah. And, you know, the work won't be as good as, you know, you'd hope for. And it's not ideal. It's tough. I mean, I felt really bad doing it. 
um, and that's the reason why I, I left. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that office. So um, you're you're a couple yeah. years ahead of me. Then it sounds like because I've I had that realization during during lockdown. I mean, I wouldn't say that. I mean, you focus on all the other things instead. Yeah. Right? <laughs> no, no. As, as in, yeah, as in, I, you were working in that in that way, and it made you feel like you weren't giving your your best work or something or you know it didn't give you that good feeling about the work you were doing um i had that that realization yeah. during covid that actually you know what i i could be doing spending you know even earning less and just just doing a bit better yeah i mean actually you know what the only reason why i actually found i felt like that in the early uh in my first year is because i was working there only part time right. and i was part time here so I would see the difference between the two in the quality of work that I would do. Um, so that's really helped me see it early on a lot quicker because of the mentors I keep surrounding myself with um, and constantly chatting up with them about <laughs> my future and then my current state. It's stressful, really, really stressful. Last first two years have been probably the most stressful years of yeah. my life to be honest with you um but even now it's getting better but i feel like we all need that part in the early stage um that so that you know while you have our because early stage our i our energy level is probably the highest yeah yeah right because like after graduation you're like all right let's go <laughs> you know time to like make something happen, make changes in people's lives. You know, we are meant to do fillings, crown, whatever, you know, make them happy. And then like, with all that energy, you know, uh, it's good to kind of channel it in ways that if, for me, I was glad that I had the, I had my mental energy towards it. Um, and he even like Dr. Wu, right, Greg Wu, he constantly, ask me questions about, about, you know, why I want to do certain things, what's my end game, yeah. you know, because he also wants to help me out too, no matter what it is. And, but those kind of set of questions that I get like a weekly, daily basis really help me reevaluate as to who I am, what I'm doing, what my purpose is, you know, what should I put current energy towards? Yeah, yeah. Um, so, you know, I never realized having a mentor was this powerful and impactful in your life, but yeah, now I know. Uh, so, yeah, I think it's really important. I'm not sure that I have someone at the same level, but I've got you know a couple of people that I, I that kind of draw inspiration from and ask questions to and give me advice. So yeah, I think I think that's really important. Yeah, exactly. I mean, we. I mean, I learned. I try to learn uh, anything from anybody. Yeah, as yeah. much as I can. Like I'm learning a lot from you talking of talking about all these things, your trips to you know, Australia and just I get try to get the inspiration, but having also having that sort of inspiration by p other people as well, people with different kinds of experience, like they all provide such different feedback and value yeah everyone's got something that they can they, they can bring to the table even if it's not massive and you know everything doesn't have yeah. to be massive and groundbreaking it can just be the tiniest little oh that's a good little tip and then you you take it on board and then you know you yeah a little step by step like you're saying yeah 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 exactly man <laughs> we can talk about this for hours. i know this is the this is the thing um let's go to like some some random stuff is there something that you always bring up that nobody agrees with you on it like certain topic that you you talk about and then everyone's like no man no george what are you talking about <laughs> for me it's always in football uh... like i have weird i have strange um or for me not it's not strange for me it makes sense i have opinions about football that that people are just like no what are you talking about D don't talk nonsense and um, yeah hmm. i don't know i don't like i try not to express it if they if i know that they'll, they're gonna say no <laughs> <laughs> i mean to, to be like 
most of it in here is probably what people disagree with. Inside, yeah. <laughs> so I try not to like bring to fruition. <laughs> I don't try not to uh, say it out loud. Um, you know, there are sometimes when I talk about different ideas. Um, about how things should work, mm. you know, because um, like for me, my conversation and my opinion, I focus more on you know, hey, this is the current trend, um, and kind of this is like the way the future probably gonna, is is gonna go. Yeah. Um, I got a lot of no's in a lot of things. Like for example, when I worked on all my startups, the ideas I had. I've always got a no from every, everybody. Yeah, mm-hmm. good. So I, I think it's, it's a matter of how- Isn't that part much, of the territory though? It is. Yeah. I mean, it's all about the grind at that point. But there's a lot of people are going to disagree with you. Yeah, I mean, th- th- that's kind of the thing. Like people don't- At first. Yeah, so I mean, l- l- let's bring up something that I spoke to to jason about yesterday which i'm quite passionate about is you know vertical integration with you know tesla for example they they've binned off the dealership model in the u.s and i think there's a huge deal in the u.s in the uk it's not so much of a big thing but Mm. the dealership model in the u.s is like being turned on its head because you can just go to the website and buy something now and that's how it's always been done and people don't want to see any other way so when you for example bring out one of your ideas people are like no that's never been done it's not going to work because we always do it this way so it's, it sounds like the same sort of thing you know people are stuck in their own ways and they want to keep the status quo yeah until you can show them enough value that the new yeah, way it's works too obvious that it has to change and yeah yeah <laughs> yeah there are some backstories that i can tell you about i just don't want to publicized don't blame people that's i'm like trying to be careful with the words because i did get in trouble um at school too uh <laughs> uh being a little too outspoken about certain things so, you know once uh, call me when you retire bro <laughs> we'll, we'll get into it <laughs> yeah dude i used to be a lot more vocal about thoughts that yeah. a lot of people did agree yeah uh, some people didn't um but I will also realize to keep my mouth shut. Shut. <laughs> I've I've not quite worked that one out myself yet. I'm just happy to let let the world hear my thoughts on pretty much everything. There's certain things that I'm 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 locked up on, but you know, we'll keep them inside. But yeah, I think I think most things I'll I'll lend my two cents in. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what's something that I should have asked you that I didn't know enough to ask? There's like a really obvious thing to know about George that I just just skated over. Uh, well, I uh, I don't know <laughs> to be honest with you. I, we talked quite a lot today. Like I, uh, there's a lot of things I couldn't say yet um, in regards to the app. But yeah, no, that's fine because you know, you're early doors. That's, that's fine. Fair enough. Yeah, yeah. My thoughts everywhere on it right now, but. One thing about me, I don't know, dude. I'm not the interest <laughs> See, I like football. <laughs> the thing is, people people always say that, but then we've ended up talking like an hour and a half or something, and just like, well, you had enough to speak to someone who's almost a stranger for an hour and a half. So I think everyone's got to. Yeah, because you're you're re- you're leading this conversation really well. <laughs> it's all practice. I can you imagine? I am the guy in school. And through dental school, who was the quietest guy in the room? Yeah. Really? Ask pretty much anyone. Well, once you got me, you know, like on more of a personal level, one to one or whatever. Yeah, I had things to say, but you know, in, in a group, I'm I'm quiet. I'm not talking too much. I'm I'm keeping my mouth shut. I'm not I'm not throwing my thoughts out there. So, um, times have changed. Mm. That's interesting. I mean. Do you feel like this is a way for you to channel that energy or? Um, I think I just, I'm more comfortable in who I am now than I previously was. Mm. I don't know if you, I, I don't want to be like cliche, but like I found myself and all that, you know, <laughs> all that sort of stuff. But Dude, it's not a cliche. It does happen. Yeah. But I think, I think I found where I enjoy 
and somewhere that I'm comfortable in and a way that I'm comfortable doing it. And I can probably talk in, in multiple venues now in, in different ways. Cause I've done lecturing this year, uh, to, to dental students about social media use, you know, in, in groups of like 20 or 30. So I think once you have something you're confident about talking about, then you can, then you can go and it's fine. Dude, what's your thought on, on, um, Instagram? What about it? Because I could talk for hours. <laughs> Dentistry, dentists on Instagram. Um. So the, so I'll outline the the talk that I I did. I think that's probably the best way to to approach it. So for young dentists, especially dental students, there are guys out there like Doctor Schiffenhaus. Have you seen him, Steve Schiffenhaus? I think that's how you say his name. I I think B A R D guy, yeah. Bard guy. Um, there's mm-hmm. George the dentist. There's Rizal. Um, people like Brett Gilbert. These are the guys you need to be following initially. So initially for me, it's learn. So young dentists, you know, and I don't know when you become not a young dentist and become someone who can take the next step. But initially, I think you just need to look at what's out there and see how people are doing things. All of the guys who are telling you how and why and the reasoning behind the things they're doing as opposed to the guys who are just throwing a before and after of veneers because that's no use to you. So that's kind yeah. of how I see things. Cause yeah, you, yeah, you can be like, Oh wow. Someone's doing veneers and they're only two years out, but that might be the guy who was the cream of the cream in dental school. Like he just got it. So obviously he's going to move much faster than you. So for me, it's like, okay, learn from people, but don't like compare yourself mm-hmm. because you might be really good at dentures. And you're never going to be good at veneers because it's just not your forte. Yeah. So for me, it's it's learn first, then you go into the next stage, which is networking. So stuff like this, you know, speaking to people, ask questions, DMs, build a bit of a network of people that like you and you like them. And that's the fun part. And then after you've done all that, you know, maybe you land yourself in a nice job at, uh, at someone else's Emerson Clinic or whatever. Then then you can maybe look at advertising. And advertising is hard, it's difficult, and you'll be tearing your hair out. It's, 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 it's weird. You have, to, you have to look at things in a completely different way. So, but you need the skills first. You need, you need to get to the, to the level where you can deliver on the things you're advertising. So what's the point in advertising day one out of university when you're not good enough to literally shout about yourself yet? That's true. That's our way of using it. And I do agree with that, actually. <laughs> <laughs> like completely. You, I think you're just nail on with that. Well, yeah, huh. I, that's that's kind of where my how I see things. Like, yeah, yeah, it's just interesting coming from you because uh, I mean you're involved with so many dentists, and I'm sure you probably see that. I mean, the name itself is <laughs> dentists. Of yeah, well, I wanted to be the first so. thing that people see when when you type in dentist, so it kind of made sense. Uh, I did try to get dense of Instagram, but someone had taken the name and there's like zero posts. So I was like, okay, fine. Uh, it went with dense of Insta instead. Uh, Who designed the, uh, the logo? Photoshop. Huh? I did it on Photoshop. Yeah. You did? Dude, that was a really, really smart. Uh, lo- Do you have a background in uh, digital um, uh, uh, graphic design? No, I, I have a background in YouTube tutorials. <laughs> That's... Everything I do is YouTube Dude. tutorial based. Um, wow, good for you, true hustler. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's interesting. Like my, I mean, apart apart from you know social media networking, my I, I love photography, which is why I've got so many photos. If people are wondering, that's why I've got so many photos. I just I take thousands of photos. Like yesterday, do you see the floating cup one? Did you huh? see the floating cup that I did? Which one? Uh, there's a post yesterday. Let me send it. Dude, you have so many posts. Sorry. <laughs> I can't catch them all. Yet. Uh, let me send it to you. Um, you're not going to be able to see it on your phone, are you? Maybe you can. Uh, George will disappear for a second while he checks this this out. Uh, oh, I see it. That dude, that's actually really cool. How'd you do that? There was a string tied to the cup handle, and it was <laughs> it was up there, uh, tied, and then I had my uh, my remote. Uh, you can see now the remote so then i would i was there 
took the remote, put it down, put my hand under it, take five images, then I do it again until I got one that I liked. Did you uh, see that from a YouTube tutorial as well? Peter McKinnon, that one. Yeah, he's uh, he's really good. If anyone wants to get into photography, Peter McKinnon, Matty Hapoya, uh, and who's the other guy? Crap, I can't I can't remember the other guy. There's another guy, Daniel Schiffer, is good for videos. So those are the three guys. Dude, have you ever thought about creating a? Why don't you create a list of all these people to follow? Uh, yeah, I probably should. I'll I'll I'll, I'll yeah. get a list going in uh, in in the Discord uh, for everyone. Yeah, yeah, no, I think you should definitely tr maybe have that on the website or wherever you know Discord. Have a list of prosthodontists to follow, photography to follow, cosmetics to follow. Yeah. You know, and the doctors to follow. I'll I'll have a look at that. I mean, we've we've got the the find a dentist thing, which I don't think we've had much much luck from yet. But I've not really pushed it. Uh, we'll see how that goes. But yeah, there's there's loads of guys out there. But I like finding new people, like which is why I keep on going on live and asking. Mm. Um, oh, sit back a bit, by the way. Yeah, you're you're half off. Oh. Yeah, you're good there. Uh, which is why I keep on going on live and just going. For an hour, I'll sit there going, guys, give me ideas for who I should get on the podcast. Guys, give me ideas for who I should get on the podcast. And I literally do that for an hour and answer some questions as well. We get nice lists of d interesting people. And I can't know everyone. This is the thing. I try hard, but I can't know everyone. There's there's guys that you might follow that I don't follow. And you're just like, wow, Stephanie Tran, amazing endodontist or, you know, whatever. Um, And you can, you know, pull out these names and then I can go go ahead and give them a message and go, come on the podcast, please. So, yeah, I'll 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 try and set up a list. I think I think Dennis Vincent is the list, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, all two thousand of them. Yeah, dude, you can do so much in the dentist. Um, I mean, I really like that idea, and you are probably in the best position to make that work. I've been thinking about it, and why don't you focus on that as a because I. Focus on people who do, uh, what do you call it? What do you call it? Uh, travel dentistry. Uh, what do you, uh, tour, uh, dental tourism. Dental yeah. tourism, yeah. Yeah, why don't you use that to build? I mean, right now it's kind of tough. But... It's, yeah, it's, it's kind of difficult at the moment. I, I do kind of, I have had some uh, inquiries, but they tend to be from very strange places, like people in India asking me, where, you know, who's the best dentist for so and such and such. Um, I did try and send one guy to you, but I think they were a bit further away from you than than we hoped. Um, but I've sent yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But like, what in, what 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 if you focus on those like uh, offices that would prioritize on patients like that? Yeah, because there are offices who do cosmetic and stuff like that, right? That would focus on patients who are constantly traveling. Yeah, no, no, it's it's definitely an idea. I mean, the the idea behind it was like. Do you know if you have patients who've gone away and it was more to be a group between us mm. you've got a patient who calls you up goes my crown's fallen out i'm on holiday i'm in the uk i'm in london and you go okay i, I know a friend and then you can be like okay uh, there's so and such and such from from dennis of Insta who's on the group um you know he's part of our, our little a little clan He'll he'll see you, he'll sort you out, he'll give you a decent price and everything, you know. And I know he's decent because I've seen his work. So yeah. and the and the same and I get hundreds of inquiries. You'll get inquiries. Might be from someone who's far away from you, you know, not close enough to come. So you might be like, Oh well, my friend works in LA. Um you, yeah, why don't you go see him? So that that was the idea behind it. It was it was very like it was very much like, well, I need to give people as much benefit from helping me out as possible. So the mm. photography checklists, all these things, and we'll, we'll see uh, what kicks off. Yeah, no, that's interesting. Yeah, I wish it, I, I hope that it does actually. <laughs> it, it's interesting. It's hard to execute. That's the thing. Yeah, it's, it's difficult. It's a one man show right now. Like I'm, I'm doing everything by myself at the moment. So. How many how many people are uh, contacting you right now, like patient wise? Patient wise, probably at least probably one one. It goes into fits and starts, but I I reckon fifteen or twenty a month who are actually asking for me to find them a dentist or something. Um, how many have you? How many success cases have you had? 
I don't follow them up. I probably should. I pro probably should follow them up a bit more. Yeah. I get some really, really stupid questions, though. Like, I've seen people nailing down their teeth with files. Should I try it? Is it okay? Like, no, please don't. Have you seen that on TikTok? The TikTok trend with the, the file and stuff. I get, I get weird things like that where it's just like, no, just go to your dentist. And they already have a dentist. They're just thinking they can get away with doing something stupid. Uh, so I get a lot of that sort of stuff. And people asking... Um, people asking where there's cheap dentistry which is is difficult because you you know when you get a cheap dentist and you're going abroad you get what you pay for you get you get yeah exactly even the good dentists abroad are going to a good lab and the good lab costs pretty much the same everywhere so if the lab cost is x uh you're going to have to pay the markup on X because you're paying for the guy's time as well. If he gets the crappiest lab out there, then yeah, you're going to have a cheaper, a cheaper outcome, aren't you? So it's, yeah, it's... I mean, imagine having a thousand dollars to buy a car versus 40,000. Yeah. So I get a lot of those kind of requests. So they're not the best patients that I want to be sending to you or I want to be sending to Ricardo or whatever. So yeah, I, th I think, I think there's a, there's something that can be done there and the more and more people I get on the page, the more and more requests I get. So we'll have to see where it goes with that. Yeah, I, I mean, it sounds like you're on the right path because the fact that people are inquiring about this stuff mm. shows some sort of demand. The question is, how can you supply that, those kind of demand, right? How can you, because like right now, I think you, you, it seems like to me that you're still looking to find a sweet spot to be able to fulfill their demand, right? Yeah, I mean, it's it's one of those things that I want people to see, you know, if they click on the link in bio and they go, okay, I can find a dentist and there's people that I trust there, you know, people like yourself, like Ricardo, like some of the other guys who are on the group as well. And then that's fine. But my main focus is honestly on the podcast. That's kind of what I enjoy the yeah. most. It's the added bonus, you know, I'm, I'll, I'll keep it going. And I'll do as much as I can for it. But maybe at some point I'll take it a step further once we get to, I don't know, 100K, 120 or something like that. And we're getting loads and loads. Until I'm getting a couple of requests a day, it doesn't make sense to pour loads of energy into it. Not really. So. Yeah, you're right. Um, but I think you should start taking notes as to like create an Excel spreadsheet. Yeah. For each interaction you have, ask them what kind of questions that they're asking, each person is asking. Locations create as well. Create an interface sort of, thing. of that. Right. Like once you have like thousands of people, thousands of that data, mm. you can now focus, oh, maybe this isn't the right direction. Maybe. If I have something else for them, it's gonna solve their, you know, their, their problem. Yeah. Because you know what I mean. Because like the feedback that you get right now is that you already have a solution in mind, but I feel like you need to hear out from more and more people before you actually figure out what the true solution is. Yeah. So I think the change will come when we start posting more cases before and after. Uh, At the moment, it's very much people based. You know, we're seeing pictures of amazing dentists from across the world and you know their clinic and stuff like that but no one's right. seeing their work once you start so you seeing, wanna once you start seeing that's what you're asking me about the photos before yeah so i, I th this is what i wanted to try i wanted to try getting root canals out there so if there's young dentists who don't want to do a root canal you know because it's a bit complicated i can send it to ricardo i can send it to a brett gilbert michael adams whoever it is there's someone who wants some veneers and you've done a bit more courses. I can say, oh, George is in Boston or George is in wherever, you know. You're in Boston, right? Yeah. Yeah. I get confused where who's where, but I'm I'm getting better. Um, so I can say, yeah, George is in such and such a place. He can see you and, you, you know, I, I know he's done the right courses. Happy for him to, you know, to, to check it out and see what's up. So once people see before and afters, I think you then get a huge jump in that kind of person messaging at the moment it's yeah. at the moment i'm i'm more often getting cd messages from you know mid you know south asian men than i am from people wanting treatment <laughs> asking for the girls numbers right it's on i'll send you the link afterwards there's there's literally a thread every time i get it i screenshot it i add it and yeah oh man creeps out there there was one where the guy has circled the one, the girl that he wants and said, can you send number, please? And it's like, obviously I just screenshot it and then, yeah, blocked. Like, that's some nerve. Some real nerve.
Yeah. Well, hey, that's what, there's a good and bad for each every technology. Yeah. I mean, it's funny because I, I have now more content for my, my Twitter. Boy, yeah. <laughs> so, so, please, if you're a South Asian CD man, please keep on sending me them and not the girls because, you know, I can I can do something with it. They can't. Yeah, dude, actually, but you're right. Um, if you want to take the direction of new, like, new patients, connecting them to, you know, um, cosmetic cases, that's probably the way yeah, to go. You need to post before and afters. Or you need to, if you're wanting more referrals, you need to post more of your, you know, um, endos if you're an endo. You need to post more of your implant success if you're an implant guy. So yeah, that's that's the thing. And the guys on the Patreon can just send it me whenever. Like Ricardo sent me a couple. Uh, that's why I was like asking, have you if you've got anything you want to try out? Then I'm happy to go for it. Um, Dude, I am not good enough to be able to do that. You're in the, you're I'm in the education and, and, and com communication realm. Huh? You're, in the, you're in the education realm still. You're in step one and step two. You're not quite a, a advertising route yet. You know, in my in my Instagram yeah. step ladder. Exactly. Just like I'm at probably like bottom of the totem pole right now. A little higher. <laughs> like you're in a nice practice, like so you've got you've got one step up. Yeah, like little by little, dude. Like these people spend like years to be at that mastery level. That's the you thing. know. Yeah. So, so you know, little by little. Yeah. Well, that's the idea behind it. It is, like I said, at the moment, it is the side, the side thing of the the thing that I want to get going is like a, a community around it. Um, where at the moment there's what seven or eight guys on there, so. You know, it's it's not going to be it's not going to be kicking yet. Maybe when you get to maybe fifty, sixty, then you've got you know a couple of guys who are going to be online all the time. Um, but yeah, we'll we'll have to see as and when that comes. Discounts are coming in, so we you get discounts from Prozent USA, and another one's coming up soon. So hopefully, you know, just I just want to benefit people who are going to back me basically. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. nice. Um, I feel deep asking, like, I feel like a bit seedy asking people to sign up without having, like, huge numbers of, oh, you get this and that, and yeah, you get free first class tickets to so and so and whatever. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. I mean, have you brainstormed other ideas? I'm open to anything. If I can make it work, um, we'll, we'll look at it. So, yeah. But everything that I've yeah. thought of, I've done so far. Oh, I see. Okay, so nothing for future plans. No, I, I, as soon as I get an idea, I try and try and action it. Um, and if it's inactionable, I just I shelve it. So at the moment, there's nothing that I've thought of that I I couldn't manage. Um, maybe I'm just not thinking hard enough. Hmm. They're different. I mean, yeah. I mean, there probably are different ways of doing it. It's hard because as a content creator, there's so much you can provide. Um, usually the pathway that I've seen that people do with Patreon is um, allowing a lot of one-to-one -one connections. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's one and which you kind of provide. Already. Yeah, I mean, I, I get I get people. So the guys who are on the higher levels, they get one-on-one. -on -one. I, I basically set up their Instagrams and go, this is the photograph you have to take. And these are the contents that you need to create for your goals. And they go ahead and do that. Um, so that that's kind of there as well. And then we do things like this, you know, podcasts, get your name out there, um, get your ideas out yeah. there. So one to one, I think I'm good. I have seen people do StreamYard. That's pretty cool. Dude, have you ever thought of managing, offering to manage their Insta, like office Instagram? Uh, what full time managing this that person's thing? That would be, yeah, that would be really, that would be a lot of work though. I, at the moment, I kind of, I, I yeah, know that would be, but that's a lot of value. People mm. are going to willing to be a part of, here's the thing. You're using that as an opportunity to grow your audience. Yeah. Right. And paying for being part of the community. They're not paying for that service. They're paying to be part of your community because that's one of the things yeah. you offer. To be honest, discounts it's something i mean the american dental associations they will give discounts but it's 
it doesn't mean a whole lot, mm. right? What means to people a whole lot, what gives real value is if there's a direct return on investment. Yeah. And yeah, these comp- a lot of offices are struggling with their own Instagram, uh, keeping up with it. Even me. Like, I don't have time to manage our office Instagram. Either. Yeah, it's, it's um, one of those things that I almost become an agency then, don't I? like a like a marketing agency market yeah i mean that they do everything but they charge what two three thousand dollars a month yeah so i mean that that's the thing if if you're taking on a whole office's thing you you, you're going to charge that higher level at the moment i'm I'll, i'll sit down with the guys for two hours i go this is what you're doing okay change this so this is more obvious then these are the kind of posts you need to be looking at these are the hashtags you need to use these are the these are the things that you want to try out and they go ahead and do that. Sure. But that's kind of like what 10 pounds a month It's it's, it's much smaller change. And then I review things, you know, constantly, but I'm not physically going and taking their photographs and posting for them and, and all that sort of thing. Oh, no, no, no. They will send you the photos. Yeah. And you just post a uh, daily basis or weekly basis, you know, what yeah, have there's something in there and we'll have, we'll have to see how it goes. I've done a couple of um, videography sessions with one of my friend's clinics. So I did the full shoot and editing of the video. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm very low level. I'm, I'm not like an amazing videographer. So I did that for free just to, just to upskill and see what, what it would look like at the end. And I noticed mistakes that I made. So yeah, we'll have to, we're going to try again and see what comes out. Yeah. But dude, I, I don't know, like the Instagram, I mean, that's like really good because it's like high quality. Uh, downside is that you have to physically go yeah, there. Yeah. Right. And so one of the things you could possibly explore is that in a way that try it. And if you can catch enough attention, just make it faster, process faster and hire an intern, pre yeah, yeah. dental student, you know, just source it out, you know, but you work with them. Hey, I've been through this. This is a formula, you know. Yeah, that's that's the thing. And to be honest, if they're doing it for like twenty bucks, like these office, like something like less than that, or something around there, like cheap like that, just to get their feet in the through the door into the Patreon, I just think It'd be worth it. There's such a huge, you know, ROI on it, and you can build on on it too, right? You can maybe branch it if they were uh, willing to pay hundred dollars more a month. Then on their website, you'll be that guy to be able to respond to mm. the, the patients asking for, you know, things. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's a lot of ways you can take it. And I think the thing that I'm always worried about is, you know, time is finite and what am I going to enjoy the most? So true, I, true. It's that, it's that same thing as like finding finding your passion, finding the, the thing that you enjoy the most. I like doing the one-on-ones. I don't know if I want to do the menial task of posting for other people. Um. Mm. so the one-on-ones maybe i'll take that up but maybe maybe there comes a point where i i bring someone else in who goes who does the posting for them as part of my service and you know i just hire someone to do that and and we expand it that way but uh, dude you can't so... you can't have a whole army of yeah. interns like pre <laughs> you know you help them out you know connecting with people to shadow um and in return you know they can do some of the worst at no cost like mm. that you know yeah and to them it's probably a lot simpler yeah because the the phone literate the camera literate <laughs> yeah 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 th- there's Cause... so much you could do i mean instagram is the bottomless pit and i've seen guys do it in a hundred different ways and be successful um so yeah you you got to do i mean look at bloody tooth guy his is very personal to how he he does things and he's built a whole successful career around you know his offices and his instagram page and and all these things so you have to find your own your own voice as well that differentiates you from the crowd i think that's really important. yeah dude his his uh his, his work is amazing i don't know how he does all that surgery he does it all himself like all everything like the posting he does himself he has someone hold the camera while he does it but he posts it, he writes the captions, he does all this stuff. Why? Why does he why why does he do that? Do everything. There's so much work. Yeah, I mean he was saying, look, it's the personal touch, you know, if if it becomes someone else's voice, then mm. 
then what what you know you lose that contact with your with your audience like if if he replies to you in the, in the dms that's him replying to you it's not someone from the office it's the, it's you know it's personal uh it's yeah. personal phone which is why i think people love him so much because he's authentic and he's not fake in that way yeah no, I, I agree it's <laughs> interesting to hear that directly yeah so i mean that that's that's the thing so do you give up that control and let someone else do it or do you learn the formula and implement it and and take it your own spin on things yeah dude uh, people are lazy like we uh, <laughs> like we said originally before. Yeah. said yeah um so i don't know when that will come but it's the, it's things to thought think about i i think you're right there there's definitely scope for me to do more definitely scope for me to do more yeah, but I mean, it's a lot of commitment. So <laughs> that's that's what yeah, that's the thing. And if if I want to go and do an endo program, do I have time to run? So I can I can do run a podcast, but can I run everyone's social media as well as doing an endo program Dude, or something? If you can manage people, you can, you can accomplish anything. Yeah. You just want to make sure that you can provide the value to the person who's working with you, right? And if you can do that, you know. I don't say why not, you know. Yeah, I I think you're right. There's there's always a way. We just gotta see what's worth it to you and what your goals are. And that's I think you know when people ask you questions like, is there scope in? I had this question. I did the live to tell everyone that we're doing this, and someone asked me what is the scope in cosmetic dentistry, and I was like, look, if you want to do cosmetic dentistry, you can do all of the cosmetic dentistry. Just work at it, and if it's what you want to do, do it. Um, I think that's it. That's the that's the best way you could say it, really. Yeah, you just gotta put the time in it. Yeah, we need to disagree on something. We're just agreeing too much. Let's have a fight. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Yeah. Oh, dude, this is like a super long podcast. No, I've never I been on webcam with somebody for this long. <laughs> I'm taking you right out of your comfort zone. I was thinking we've got a couple of questions left and then we're probably going to wrap things up. Um, there's one question that I want to ask someone from the States. Why is it when you speak to someone from the States and go, what's your deal? Everyone has a canned answer. Or what's your story? I didn't get the question. So like, it, you know, if, if, if I'm walking around the UK and, and someone says, what's your story? I'm like, what are you on about? But apparently, like, there's, there's like a thing where in the states, everyone's got their little, like, quick life story of wh who they are and what they are, just like wrapped up and ready to go. Is that a thing, or is that just like a, a in the movies type thing? I think it really depends. You know, it's I, I don't think I come across that much. The only times when I hear that is when I'm drunk. Right. Uh, you know, at the bar, it's like, hey, what's your story? With my, like, glasses, like, half empty. Um, yeah, I I don't know. I never really thought about it. That's an interesting question. Just a cultural, now that you, cultural thing that I've noticed a little bit. That's interesting. I've seen it before. I just never thought of it that if it's normal or not. Um, but I think it depends where you're at, you know. Mm. Um uh but candid answer wow I, this is like mind blowing for me right now i i'm not sure uh <laughs> i don't know i can't really answer that you, question. yeah it's, it's just it's something that i noticed I, was, I thought you know what i'll just ask you know see what see what's up with that um where can we well i think we'll wrap it up because i think you're i think you're uh we've caught, kept you for quite a while we've done like hour 45 which i don't think you were expecting right no, you weren't kidding when you warned me about yeah. it. Yeah. Um, anything you want to plug while you're at it? Your Instagram, YouTube, etc. Yeah. Uh, check out my Instagram at Dr. George Kwan. Screen. Um, yeah. Or uh, there's also on my YouTube channel, uh, Dental Care Explained. Um, you can check it out. I am looking to post a new video soon talking about dental delta dental insurance um because we're dropping that insurance for our office right 
uh, <laughs> we're gonna just like a patient explanation. Uh, you can check that out. I don't post as much anymore on my Instagram, but you know, you can connect with me and so we can uh, be friends <laughs> and stay connected. Yeah. Uh, yep. So br awesome. I've got to stick the links to George's Instagram and the YouTube in the description after we finish this. Uh, make sure to like the video, comment and subscribe if you're new, hit the notification bell. And if you want to be in the Patreon group where there is a group chat on Discord, where you can also potentially get some discounts, hopefully more and more as days go on, where you can also get some one-on-one -on -one tuition with Instagram and I'll help set up everything for you uh, and all sorts of stuff like that, then uh, check it out if you want to sort of support the channel and even get it out there. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's been great, man. It's been fun talking to you finally and hopefully we're going to catch up in real life soon, one day. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I hope, man. Yeah. Like, can we, like, do Wingardio Vediosa to, like, COVID? No way. We'll be abracadabra. Yeah. No, that's uh, yeah. It needs to go. It needs. To, it needs to be. It needs to be done. As soon as twenty twenty one hits, it needs to be. It needs to be out of here. Yeah, only wish for the best. Yeah, guys, this has been George Kwan. Absolute pleasure, and we will see you later, guys. <laughs>